Hey folks, Spencer here with Spencer's Botanical Spotlight. I hope everyone is doing well this week. Uh, first, I want to give thanks to the Quickie Mart here at 53rd in Peoria and Tulsa. They were nice enough to accommodate me and let me come into their store and uh, film this video here. Uh, so I have been getting some pretty nasty and irate emails regarding uh, my support for 7OH products. And so I just wanted to do a little PSA, a little quick video on that to give my thoughts on why 7OH is not the end of Kratom, why, uh, why it's not going to get it turned illegal and everything uh, about that. And so obviously my favorite product is EDP. Uh, their 7OH shots are truly remarkable. So if you are wanting to try 7OH and you are uh, an experienced user, I definitely recommend the 7OH. And after I'm done with this video, I'm actually going to show you a new way to take it that is a lot easier than what I initially recommended. So uh, for starters, for those who are unaware of what 7OH is, let's go ahead and break it down. So with the Kratom plant, there's a plethora of alkaloids. Uh, so many that we don't really even know what all of them do. It's still being studied. There still uh, is a great need uh, for research with Kratom. And so uh, the two main components in it are mitragynine and 7 hydroxy mitragynine. Now, the mitragynine part of it is what gives you the energy, the clarity, the, you know, some of the euphoria, but it's mostly the energy. Uh, part and then the smallest part of the plant is 7 hydroxy mitragynine. That's less than I believe a percentage. You barely have any of it uh, in the base plant. That's what gives you that euphoria. That is the opiate uh, part of Kratom. So, what companies have figured out finally is how to extract that, how to extract it and make it into. Uh, their own product. It's you know stronger than OPMS and it's stronger than any of uh, the other products. This is the main. Uh, this is the main uh, euphoric uh, product. And so, with that, it's going to have a very high chance uh, to be uh, addicted to it. You can get addicted to it very quickly, but you can get addicted to anything. Uh, quickly that causes right. euphoria. So it will cause addiction uh, just as Kratom can, uh, but you have a higher affinity uh, for it with the 7-OH. And so like I said, with the 7-OH having a higher affinity for addiction and also how much stronger it is, I mean it's incredibly, incredibly strong. And also it's just warm in here and I'm sweating like crazy. So ignore that. It's not the Kratom. I actually haven't had any today yet. So uh, take take the OPMS shots. This is an OPMS gold. Most people would take the whole thing. If, if you're a novice at Kratom, you're going to throw up. It's not going to work. However, uh, if you have a high tolerance or you're an everyday user, you'll be able to have a pretty good time with this. I don't recommend it, but you'll be able to have a pretty good time. Uh, with just a uh, one shot of this. However, with 7-OH, it's so strong that this bottle from EDP, it's recommended that you take barely even where my finger is. I mean, it's you, you take it in much smaller increments. That's just how potent it is. Uh, and so you definitely have to be a lot more careful with 7-OH. But from what I understand and from what I've seen is there's no uh, danger with 7-OH. There is a, uh, a cap that you will uh, reach. You can't go over that cap from what I've seen. Uh, you know, with traditional opiates, you can just take more and more and more and more until pretty much you're nodding out and you're, you know, you know what I'm saying. And so with 7-OH, it does seem like it still has the safety mechanism to uh, cap out, but the, the issue that there is, is that there are a lot of companies that, you know, with Kratom being unregulated, there's a lot of companies that are honest with how much 7-OH there is in it. 
And so it's making some people more, uh, you know, more addicted to it just because it's not regulated. And I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm kind of rambling here, but I don't really know how I feel about Kratom regulation. Um, I definitely think there needs to be consumer protection acts, and I definitely think uh, you you need to have to have it tested before you can release it on the market. There should be, I guess, more regulation. And sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties right there. Uh, and so, yeah, there definitely needs to be some sort of regulation, not a not a full-on FDA regulation, but there needs to be, you know, kind of like what Oklahoma has right now with the Kratom Consumer Act, where you have to present lab tests before you sell something. Uh, there's there's a case down in Florida, and I'm not going to name the brand, uh, where they uh, tested the brand, and there was triple the amount of 70H in the product than they were advertising it for. And so that's what's scary. And I mean, there's even reports of um, fake EEPs out there. Uh, you know, the market is just getting flooded with this stuff. And that's the dangerous part. And it's it's reiterating the, the dangerous part of Kratom in general. That's what almost got it, you know, illegal back in 2016, is that you just don't know what's in it. And uh, there just, there needs to be some oversight or something there. I don't know. Anytime government touches something, they usually screw it up. But, you know, there definitely needs to be a change in that area. Because it is sad. There's, I'm friends with many vendors and, uh, you know, I've consulted vendors. And, uh, you know, you have these small shops and these, these you know, kind of like Quickie Mart. That, you know, there's small shops that are doing everything they can uh, to make consumers safe and have a good product, but, you know. So now here's the big one. This is the one I keep getting emails regarding saying, how do I feel knowing that I am gonna be responsible for Kratom becoming illegal? I don't think my channel is going to be held responsible for getting the substance uh, illegal. I don't think 7OH is going to make Kratom illegal unless they keep flooding the market. They flood the market and, and you know, someone gets hurt with this because they're not being honest. And it's it's difficult because, you know, Kratom has that, uh, that stigma with it too, is that I've gone to smoke shops, you know, besides the Quickie Mart, and I've had uh, a kid literally went into a smoke shop to get uh, something for his vape, a coil, something like juice, I don't know, uh, went and got it for his vape. And he was talking about being stressed while studying for the ACTs. And the guy at the smoke shop said, oh, you should try Kratom. It's this, uh, it's this new thing, uh, coffee in Indonesia. That's right, coffee in Indonesia is green. And so, you know, you, you know, you have people that are lying just to sell it. And it's, I don't know the answer, but do I think that 7-OH is going to cause this plant to become illegal? No, but there does need to be safer practices with it and there needs to be people like myself doing harm reduction and trying to educate people about it because people are so scared to talk about it you go on reddit and it's impossible to even post about it there because of out of fear of getting reddit accounts shut down and so there just needs to be more bravery of discussing it and talking about it so that's that's just my two cents so I am going to show you guys a new way to take 7-OH, to take these EDP shots that is truly remarkable with uh, the old way I showed. I would show having to pour it into Tupperware and then getting an oil syringe and uh, taking it that way. This way is a lot easier. All right, so this is a really, really cool way to be able to take it. So instead of taking this and pouring it into Tupperware, you can now take a turkey baster and you can buy these on Amazon, these little air tubes, and cut them in half. If you're in Tulsa and you go to the Quickie Mart, just ask for one and they'll give it to you when you buy, uh, when you buy one. So have that, put it on there. Shake up your EDP. Yeah. 
player? Do you have? And then you can take it that way. And then whatever residue you have still in the tube, uh, what I would suggest is getting hot water and sucking it through here and then cleaning it out that way.